This is Spare Time Repair and this is a Fluke 87 multimeter. I did a previous video on the Fluke 101 which I bought recently, but ever since I got it I've been a bit underwhelmed because it's very basic, doesn't measure current, and I wanted something a bit more substantial. So I had a look on eBay and found this. Now this is a bit of an enduring classic. It was originally released in 1987, so it's 36 years old as I record this, but you can still buy it. The 87 version 5 is available today for about £500, and it adds a few extra bells and whistles, but essentially it's the same meter. The, the design is pretty much unchanged. So I thought this was a good buy. I had to pay about £100 for it. And they can actually go for more than that, but this one has a couple of issues. Obviously, it's been well used. The case is very grubby. It's probably been used in a workshop somewhere. But the seller mentioned that the battery terminal had broken off. And so that I knew would be a very easy fix. I've got another 9 volt battery snap here. So that just needs soldering on. But also the display is dim and missing segments. Now having done a bit of research I found that this is a very common issue with these meters and hopefully with a bit of servicing we can sort that out as well. It's also got a rubber seal all the way around the edge which is nice. Okay, so here's our missing battery terminal. That should be soldered on here. And it looks pretty clean inside. Obviously I'm gonna restore this and give it a good scrub. It's a bit of dust in there. I'm hoping my fuses are intact. In fact, let's test that now. Yep, we're all good there. So I think we should do the battery first and then we can have a look at the display and see what the issues are. So we've got our positive terminal here and they go through the board. I think this lead is a bit long, so I'm going to trim it down. Alright, so now we can connect our battery. And yeah, clearly we have an issue. In fact, I thought this was in the off position, so I'm, hmm. I'm just going to pop it back in the case. And check that that range switch is working okay. So we should have a backlight on this, which we do. Don't know if you can see that. Doesn't seem to want to turn off again. Perhaps it has to time out. Anyway, it appears to be working, but obviously we need to do something about that display. The way to access the display is through by taking this bezel off the top, which just clips in place here. And this is the issue. These pink strips here, 
These are elastomeric connectors, also known as zebra strips. And they conduct the signal from the board to the display. So they're not conducting properly. So I'm going to clean those up and hopefully restore function. So I'm just going to put a little dot. well stuck to the glass I think these are both the same so I don't need to worry about mixing them up If I hold it at the right angle, you can see the, the contacts on the glass, the stripes. So I need to keep clean the contacts on the glass, clean the strips themselves, and also the contacts on the board here. Copyright 1986, John Fluke. Button contacts look quite dirty as well, so I'll give them a clean too. Just going to use a little isopropyl. I try using some very fine sandpaper on the end of my plastic spudger here. You can buy servicing kits for this meter, which includes new pads like this, but they still seem really supple. I'm sure just a quick clean is going to be enough. Okay, let's give this a go. Top left. I put that on upside down. I mean, yes, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, it looks good. It looks very good. There's actually a mode, I think, according to this. Um, power up options, press two seconds while turning the meter on. So you can test the rotary switch by holding the range button when you turn it on. And that lights up all our segments. So we can see everything looks nice and clear. It really was that simple. I'm going to do a bit more cleaning. I'm going to clean the inside of this lens just to get rid of any dust. And then I'm just going to give it a good clean generally. Like there's some 
grime in between these grooves here. I think the hardest bit will be cleaning this, but we'll see, it might come up well. Just noticed uh, what looks like a burn mark here. So it looks like one of these fuses has popped in the past. Because that looks like, yeah. Yep, fuse doing its job. I'm also gonna get in here with an old toothbrush because it's just uh, a lot of old dust compacted in there. The back of the case had this foam pad, presumably to stop the battery rattling around, but that's breaking down now and it's gone a bit gloopy. So I'm gonna remove that and maybe put in a replacement pad of some sort. The back of the case is pretty scuffed up as you'd expect for something of this age. So I'm gonna try the old shoe shine trick. If this doesn't work, I can always wash it off again. I've already washed this in soap and water. I think that's a big improvement. Front of the case is cleaned up nicely. I've got all the dirt out of the grooves here. So I think I'm gonna risk the shoe shine on the front as well. There's an area at the bottom here that's quite dull from where the from where the rubber case sort of wraps over it. It's weird stuff this, it kind of obviously has something impregnated in it, but it's not, it's not wet to the touch and it doesn't leave a residue on here. So I really like it as a way of giving things a bit more sheen. One thing that will be tricky to clean is these input terminals. There's a lot of dust inside here. So I need to find something small to get in the gaps. got this thin foam material so I'm gonna cut a little bit off for the battery bay This didn't come with any test leads, but I've got a spare pair, so that's okay. And now I just need to try to clean up the, the rubber bumper case. Well, we've got it working. We've got it looking almost as good as new, I think. But none of that is gonna matter if it's not accurate. I'm not a professional, I don't have any calibration equipment, so all I can do is compare it with my other multimeters. I've got three or four here to, to compare it with. I have high hopes because I've seen other people who've had these things for 30 years, never calibrated them, and they're still within spec. So let's hope this is the same. Oh, they slide in really nicely. So I'm going to do a simple DC voltage test first of all. I've got this 9 volt battery. And we're getting 9.72. So let's try that with, this is my second most expensive meter. Actually it cost about the same price as this did used. So. This defaults to DC voltage. Nine 
9.72 so it seems to be good this is my first ever multimeter I got this in maybe 1990 the thing I like about this it's got a separate on off button so you can leave the range switch wherever you want it 9.74 they all seem to be agreeing with each other okay about 1.4 1.41 it really may just be the the test leads oh now we're getting 1.41 okay uh capacitance this is 100 microfarads oh there we go 95.6 doesn't seem to want to measure capacitance well having done a bit of research it seems that this meter can only measure up to five microfarad which is uh, surprising but that's apparently all it was capable of in the day so um, I think modern meters just can go higher because they've improved the technology I don't know I don't understand but um, yeah when I measure so this one was 10 microfarad so that was out of range which is why it wasn't measuring anything um, so if you measure this one on the the Voltcraft meter we've got 2.15 sorry this is a 2.2 and now if we do it with the fluke it does actually measure it 2.19 so there is no fault it was just unable to do anything this high so at least that answers the question and if I need to measure anything higher I'll just have to use a different meter these are ceramic capacitors they are 5 nanofarad so just need to remember to work within your limits let's try resistance okay 1.2 ohms on this one yeah about the same on this one 370k 380 i mean i don't work in high precision so this is plenty good enough for me let's try diode tests will it light the led yes it will 1.6 1 1.6 Let's try the AC voltage. We'll do it on the Voltcraft first. 244.2 244.3 And on the Mini Fluke, 243.6 We can also check the frequency. Yep, should be 50, so that's pretty much perfect. Finally, continuity. Brilliant, perfect. Continuity on this, by the way, is absolute garbage. It's so slow, it's unbelievable. Another weird thing, if I measure this resistor, it's 421 kilo ohms. And yet when I measure it with the, with the fluke, it comes up as mega ohms like 0.421 but when I change the range to to kilo ohms there's nothing I don't know I've got, I'm gonna have to look into it if anyone's got any ideas then uh, I'd be grateful to hear them so there we go one restored multimeter I'm very happy with it I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one